You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Podcast, and I have Dr. Emily Splickle. Uh, she's the founder of Naboso Technology, and she's also a functional uh, podiatrist. So, uh, Emily, thanks for coming. Of course. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, tell me about uh, Naboso. What is it, and what's the premise of the company? Absolutely. So, Naboso Technology is the first and only proprioceptive insole and mask company that is on the market. And we are targeted towards medical performance and wellness. As mentioned in the description, we have both insoles that we have. So that's one of our product lines. And then we have four different types of mask, again, for the purpose of rehab, medical, and then fitness performance. So uh, starting with the insoles, what's different about you know them versus traditional just you know monolithic dead insoles. What do yours do that's different? Yeah, so through the Naboso insoles, we are trying to bring the concept of sensory stimulation into the insole industry or the insole market. Most people, when they think about insoles, they probably think arch support. Some people might go to either custom orthotic or to even Dr. Scholl's. So there's some stereotypical associations that people put with insoles. A lot of them have to do with more biomechanical influences of the foot, where we look at foot function and foot stimulation from a sensory or neurosensory perspective. Um, So when you look at our insoles, there's a texture, little pyramid textures or two-point discrimination texture that is across the entire insole. The height of it is pretty low. It's 1 to 1.5 millimeters, and each of the textures is faced uh, very specifically apart from each other to stimulate the nerves in the bottom of the feet. So what happens when you wear the insoles and they're you know, stimulating the bottom of your feet but with different textures and depths and all that? What does that do to you and for you? Yeah, so the the skin on the bottom of the feet is a very powerful access point to how your body controls posture and balance when you're when you're standing upright in gravity, whether that's static or dynamically thinking walking. So it is that stimulation of the skin in the bottom of the foot that helps to tell the brain where the body is in space, and then that coordinates subtle shifts in the center of gravity, again, both statically or dynamically. So we have the texture, two-point texture, all across the bottom of the, or the top of the insole. You could think of it almost like a braille texture. We're actually stimulating the same nerve in the feet that you read braille with with your fingertips. So, so we're actually stimulating the same nerve. That nerve happens to be the most superficial nerve in the skin in the bottom of the feet, or it's the closest to the surface or to the ground, and it is sensitive to the two-point discrimination. So anytime you look at textured insole, textured insole research, where there's actually quite a bit of research in this category, they're really looking at what's called two-point discrimination or, you know, put your mind back to what what you think of Braille because Braille is a two-point discrimination and then that's how the the finger can differentiate between the different points. Oh, so what do people experience that wear these soles? What's the goal for them? Yeah, so some people will either feel a reconnection to their feet. Um, Most people or a lot of people, if they're not into, I guess, barefoot movement or foot fitness, or they're not in an industry, I'm a podiatrist, so I think about feet all the time. <laughs> but if you're if you're not thinking of feet or foot function, most people tune out their feet. They don't think of them when they're standing or when they're walking. Actually, in most shoes and socks and insoles, you 
start to lose an association with your feet. So you don't really feel them. You know they're there, but you can't quite sense them. I call it tuning out. So a lot of people tune out their feet. So when we have people use the Naboso insoles, one of the first things that they notice is that it forces them to tune into their feet. So it could just be like, oh, I feel my feet as I'm standing here. I feel the texture but that translates to them feeling their feet. The more you feel your feet or the sensation of the texture under your feet, that now places a higher awareness to how you're standing on your feet. So your whole posture might shift. As you walk, since you have an awareness of your feet, it might actually change how hard you strike the ground or your foot placement when you strike the ground. All of that can have an effect on impact forces. So we've had people say, when they wear the Naboso insoles, their knee doesn't bother them anymore. Their hip doesn't bother them anymore. And a lot of that could be the decrease in jarring forces from perhaps more unconscious, unaware movements that they have because they're not really connected to the ground. If we have users who have a compromise in their balance and their stability, either because of a medical condition such as neuropathy, MS, Parkinson's, a stroke, any of the, the chronic neurological conditions, what they notice is in addition to an increased sensation to their feet is it translates to them as better balance. So they feel less fearful when they're walking. They feel more stable when they stand or walk or turn or go upstairs. So Depending on the user, medical conditions, we see more, more of the wow immediate effect on them. People who have no known medical conditions but have kind of a tuned out awareness of their feet, they definitely notice their feet. And then for any of the athletes or from a fitness perspective, people may notice that they connect to the core. We've actually had people say, I feel my core when I'm standing in these, which surprises them. But it's actually, it makes sense when you think of how the body controls posture and center of gravity is the feet and your connection to the ground is deeply connected to where your body is, body's center of gravity is, which is the core. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Um, you know, I've had, I have very flat feet, so I have orthotics and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I've had, you know, I work out and stuff, so I've had times where like my calves are tight or my legs are hurting and, you know, my foot doesn't feel like it's making contact with the floor or evenly. You know, I feel like parts of my foot are not touching the floor. And then after I get a massage, I feel like more of my foot is touching the floor. I'm standing flatter on my foot, and that feels better. And, yep, um, yep. Yeah, so I, I can understand that. Yep. And I guess if you have uh, neuropathy or if you're old, you're in a lot of danger because you don't have much sense of what your foot's doing on the ground, so you're pretty likely to slip. Yeah, those who actually have neuropathy, regardless of the neuropathy, whether it's diabetic, chemo, idiopathic, have a 15 times greater fall risk. So that's that's really of a profound number. And once these individuals have their first fall, now you start to instill fear, which further increases fall risk because their movements are now almost hyper aware. So through using the Naboso insoles or any technique to reconnect to their foundation will help them reduce their fear, improve their confidence, uh, improve their mobility, and then reduce fall. Do people um, have to work their way into wearing these things? You know, wear them for uh, an hour the first day and a few hours the next day, and you know, or is it, you know, do they feel overwhelmed where there's too much sensation and they, they get burned out wearing them all of a sudden? Yeah, so everyone is a little bit different when it comes to textures. Some people are a little bit more sensitive. Some people are what's called tactically defensive, which means they actually have systemic physiological response to different textures and, and sensations. For those, we recommend our lower stimulus in soul, and then they can do exactly what you said. However, for the majority great, great majority of those who use Naboso insoles is we say, use them for 30 minutes just to see how you adjust to them. A majority respond positively. They like the sensation. They don't want to get out of them. So we say, then you're good to go. You can put them in your shoes, wear them all day, every day. If you feel like it's too much and you happen to be out and about, simply take them out and then, you know, obviously just carry them with you. And then tomorrow you can put them in again. But the break-in period is not like custom orthotics, where a lot of people think one hour the first day, two hours the next day, and you slowly want to increase. Again, sensory, very different. Now, when you wear 
the Nimboso insoles, and let's say you wear them all day, every day, some people may start to tune them out again, which means you may not feel like they're as stimulating as when you had first put them in. So what we recommend then is skipping a day, and it could be just simply a day, and then put them in the next day, and you get that re-stimulus just like you did when you first put them in. So it's almost like a, a stimulus holiday or something, or you can it actually alternate. Yeah, just, you know, your the conscious mind can only take in so much, so eventually it starts to tune stuff out. However, if it does tune out the insole, that does not mean that from a subconscious neuromuscular perspective that it's now no longer effective. You just consciously don't feel it as much. People like the conscious connection to the insoles and the feet, so that's where we would say skip a day, or we have the three different levels of stimulus. What I do personally is I alternate between the different stimulus, and then it just keeps my mind consciously connected to the insoles and you know, that that's what people want. So you don't have to take a break without them, but you just switch the stimulus. Is there a way to uh, customize this if you have certain things going on with you? Like, you know, let's say you have back pain. Uh, do you have uh, a particular well, one that you can use to, uh, to you know, put pressure in the right areas to ease that for you? Yeah, so great question. When you look at the insole, the texture is actually across the entire insole. But what I would add to that is that they're thin enough to go on top of custom orthotics. So how you said you use custom orthotics, you could actually put the Naboso insole on top of your custom orthotic, and then you get the benefit of both the biomechanical control that you may need because you have flat feet, plus the added sensory. So now we're covering both aspects of foot function. However, if we say someone doesn't have custom orthotics, but they have maybe a neuroma or a callus, or they want to offload different areas, You could still add different paddings and strappings to the insole. I do it a lot for my patients that I just kind of personalize the insoles by adding paddings and strappings to them, and you could do that. Or you could, you know, cut out certain areas if you feel like you want to offload that. You know, they're easy to cut and integrate into any uh, footwear or existing insole that you may have. Well, Well, why not integrate these into a sock? So you could have socks with certain uh-huh. textures or, again, mm-hmm. on demand if someone has, you know, pain or they're tired or they're – I mean, I would think you could customize certain parts. of You know, reflexology supposedly says the whole body's mapped to the foot. So why couldn't you have custom ones for different activities or different uh, – again, you know, if they're in pain or they're tired or they want this or energy or that kind of thing? Right. So that's where we do have the three levels of stimulus. So we typically guide and say – Let's say you're working out and you're going to be running around, maybe you're a runner. Then we recommend our 1.5 insole, which is our middle stimulus. It's a little bit more of a dulled down, um, not dulled down that it's not effective, but think of a pyramid and then you just cut the top of the point off. Um, That's what our 1.5 is. Let's say if someone stands all day, um, has diffuse foot fatigue, has a medical condition, then that's where we direct them to our neuro insole, which is the most stimulating. It is a true pyramid, so you get the top of the pyramid on the insole, so that's the most stimulating. If someone has more foot sensitivity, we direct them to the 1.0, so that's where we would, I would say, customize in a sense of, of, you know, using the words that you had said or directing people to the, the three different levels of stimulus. Um, Or we could say that when you stand all day, wear the Nero, at the end of the day, in your slippers at home, almost like a foot massage and foot recovery, go into the 1.5. So you you could use that as well. Um, And then I want to add that we are working with different orthotic labs, that they're putting it on top of orthotics now, just like I had mentioned, so that you could get some of that customization as well. But what happens if you don't use them, like you said, for a day or two and you wear, you know, shoes without them? Do they feel dull or are you compromised in your motion or do you just feel like normal? Uh, If you have a medical condition, like let's say a chronic neurological condition, um, neuropathy or whatnot, and you wear them several days, you notice an effect from them, your balance is better, and then you skip a day, just you 
stay consciously sensitive to them. You may notice that your balance has shifted a little bit, but what's actually interesting is that we've been seeing, and there's some research around the topic of the chronic effect of wearing textured insoles, which means there's a carryover or this accumulative effect that if you wear them every single day and then you skip a day or you skip a few days, that you're still getting some of the benefits even though you don't have the insoles. There's some really promising research around that and we're in the works of conducting several different research studies on these different topics just to further validate some of that. But that's what we've seen as well is we'll actually see a carryover in the pattern of some of these individuals walking pattern and their stability, even though they don't have the insoles in. That's very cool. So what's what's, what's the next step for the next uh, six months or a year? What's going to change about them or what's new? Or Yeah, so we have our full product line. We had launched the company in 2017 and it took through um, 2017-18 to get our full catalog and the development of the three different levels of the insoles, the different mats that we offer as well. So now that we have our full product line, we have our full uh, product catalog, is going into the heavy marketing within neurorehabilitation and performance. Those are the two verticals that we have the strongest effect, and most of our application or users are within those two. Um, so we are doing work with MS and Parkinson's. We're doing research within those two medical conditions, and then pediatrics as well. There's a lot of really promising pediatric applications with texture. One of the research studies that we're doing is around idiopathic toe walking, which is, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's children who walk on their toes. There's usually a sensory driver to it. Some of them can have a comorbidity of like a higher upper motor neuron condition, but some of them present completely normal, have no other known comorbidity, but the child is still walking on the toes. When you introduce different sensory stimulation, such as texture or whole body vibration, the child will go down and walk normal heel-toe gait. So it's a really fascinating area within pediatric motor development or neuromotor development. So we're doing a research study uh, on that subject. And then we're working with a few uh, sensory integration schools around children with ADHD and autism. There's often a sensory driver as well. And we've started integrating our mats in their schools and seeing different focus with the children, which is another really exciting category as well. Um, quick question. My, my wife's brother walks on his toes. He's done that his whole life. What's the implication of that? And what's the reason? And you know, what, what do you know about that uh, kind of condition or way of walking that people have? Yeah. So depending on you know, some of the drivers to it, a large part of the driver is that there is a spasticity. So a spasm or a tightness in the muscles and muscles are controlled by nerves. So it's a matter of why are those nerves being hyperstimulated? In a lot of cases, sensory stimulation can calm down the hyperactivity of the nerves. Um, a great example, I don't know if you know cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy is a spastic condition where the muscles get mm, almost over-engaged. Yeah, so then they, they lack flexibility. A lot of people with cerebral palsy walk on their toes as well because of the same spastic. But idiopathic means there's no known cause. So your, you said this is your brother-in-law? Yes. Is it your brother-in-law that? Okay, so your brother-in-law probably yep. has idiopathic, which means there's no no cause of why he walks on his toes, um, which means... Yeah, he seems fine that, otherwise. He doesn't... He just... I don't yeah, even exactly. know if he knows. He just says he does. <laughs> just a bouncy gate. Yeah, so his would be most likely classified as idiopathic. So I would be really curious if he used the Naboso insoles, if he actually drops down into a more balanced gait, or... You can use whole body vibration. There's um, different foam rollers that create vibration as well, and that calms down the nerves. And typically, you will see the muscle relax, and the individual will be able to get more flexion in the ankle to get a heel-toe gait. Now, it doesn't stay, which means you have to keep creating the stimulus. Vibration as a stimulus is a little bit harder because 
it's hard to walk around with a vibration device <laughs> on you. Most of the vibration platforms are, think of like an aerobic step and they vibrate and you can do a release on them and then go about your day. Eventually the muscles will start and tighten up. We're looking to see specifically with Nobosa because it goes in the shoe. It could go with you all day that does it have a longer effect for some of these individuals with idiopathic toe walking to give them a more balanced gait. Um, so yeah, I would be really curious for your brother-in-law if either the Nervoso insult, whole body vibration, some sort of sensory would allow him to achieve a more balanced gait. Yeah, I've tried the whole body vibration, standing on those like vibration tables, but mm -hmm. I don't know, they're just, I don't really like them at all. They're like very unsettling and they just feel weird. And it doesn't seem to, you know, I don't know how people can stand them for more than a few seconds. But your, you know, your <laughs> insoles sound like pretty easy to get used to. Yeah, very um, uh, non-invasive, low uh, barrier to entry, you know, ease. You just slide them in the shoes. You don't have to kind of set time out of your day to fit it into the lifestyle, which is really what we're looking for. Well, very good. So where can people get uh, the Nobosa? Do they need a prescription or you can just buy them, you know, at a store or something? Or where do people get them? Yep. So we sell them online. Our website is nabosotechnology.com. Naboso is N-A-B-O-S-O, sorry, N-A-B-O-S-O technology.com. So we have them online. We also have um, resellers, which are doctors, physical therapists across the U.S., and then a few retailers that we are getting into within orthopedics, surgical supply, and specialty specialty running stores are the ones that carry it. Um, and if there's any questions that people have on what is the most appropriate stimulus, what is the difference between 1.0, 1.5 Neuro, we have a great team that is accessible by email and telephone to answer anyone's questions on the insoles to make sure that people are using it effectively and in the most um, successful way. Well, very good. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, and it's interesting stuff, and uh, you know, keep inventing. It's, it's, it's really interesting. You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you.